a 60,000 hectare of sugarcane plantation on the outskirts of Natural State, North Central Nigeria. It is projected to produce one third of Nigeria's total sugar consumption. The governor of the central bank has come to assess the level of work here ahead of supporting the project. 600 million to 1 billion dollars importing sugar into the country. And so and we're saying that if Nigeria can produce sugar and be self-sufficient in food production, that this should be something that we should support. And that's the reason why we have decided to come today to give credence to the backward integration program of the federal government and we are ready to give the support. Nigeria spends so much on sugar importation annually. The Apex Bank is now considering placing sugar and wheat on the forest restriction list to check this trend. We are looking at sugar, we are looking at wheat. We started a program on milk about two years ago. Eventually, this product will go into our FX restriction list. You will just want to see to what extent we see um, the traction that is coming on from those who are currently importing these items and we are putting their feet on fire to say that we all must work together to produce these, these goods in Nigeria rather than import them. This sugar project targets job creation and revenue generation while making natural states more economically viable. Currently, if you enter into the villages, you will find majority of the youth are actually working inside this farm. Uh, secondly, uh, there are a lot of water projects, uh, school projects, clinic projects that have been done for the people, you know, by, by the Tongote uh, family. So uh, a lot of um, uh, intervention for the state government. We are more interested in the development that has come to our land. It all revenue will come, but revenue will come when the project itself begins to generate revenue. So, but right now we are happy that uh, at least, you know, the project has taken off and then uh, I believe with this trip that the central bank governor is coming, you know, all that is required will be provided so that we can just have the factory moving. Uh, in light of the of our uh, signing on to the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, we would like a situation whereby Nigeria is also the major uh, supplier of sugar to the African continent. So we will give continue to give every support to this project. We are happy with the amount of work that has gone on here. We are most delighted with the comments that have been made by the governor of the Central Bank, that uh, with his promise to give support to this project. And we have no doubt that uh, as time goes along, we will be able to see the realization of this project and uh, our desire to be self-sufficient in sugar. Because the president promised 100 million jobs in 10, ten years. years. So 100 million jobs in 10 years, you can only create those kind of jobs with these kind of projects. So I believe uh, government is on the right track in terms of, uh, you know, I know that everybody, we are all in a hurry to see the job creation, but there are quite a lot of things that are happening, you know, which people are not commenting, you know. So we need to look at the positive sides even if we are going to talk about the negative sides. This kind of project, it is only possible when you have a governor who is looking for development of his people. Because you have to have the community support, you have to have the governor support. The governor has to own it up as his own baby. Otherwise, you know, yes, you know, you are bound to have problems with community once in a while. But, you know, once you have a governor who is interested in the development of his people, it is very easy to do so. A facility of this kind, though smaller, was commissioned by the president in Niger State three years ago. Aside from making sugar, byproducts expected from here includes 90 megawatts of electricity generation as well as ethanol production. The National Board for Technical Education has called on striking lecturers under the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics to reach an understanding with the federal government and suspend its strike action. Representative of the Executive Secretary of the Board, Dr. Abdullah Ibrahim, made a call shortly after paying a courtesy call to Governor Abdullah Suley of Nasara State. The team were in the state for the accreditation exercise of the State's I College of Agriculture in Lafia. To make a little contribution you are making to this, you may not know the impact now, but the impact in the, in the future is, is huge for us. And I thank you sincerely for taking the time you know, to come and do this. And I want you to encourage your team to please do it properly, you know, do it well. Those who, what, whatever we need to do, no, it is this structure that is supposed to be a triangle instead of a square. We'll be more than happy to go back and change it to triangle rather than square. 
it is this one that is supposed to be a, a hexagon instead of actually a cycle, we'll be more than happy to go ahead and change it. You know, challenge them to do the right thing. You know, don't 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 shortcut anything. You know, uh, let them go ahead and do the right because we want to be able to produce the best technicians there is in that area. Dr. Ibrahim advised the striking lecturers not to insist on achieving all their demands before suspending the strike action. Uh, you know, when there is this strike, we always urge the two parties to reconcile so that they can have a good understanding. Uh, nowadays in Nigeria, you don't always get what you want. So once part of the what the ASUP are looking for have been achieved by the government, we urge them to call off or suspend their strike. Over the years, rice and cassava farmers in Nasara State has had to grapple with the daunting challenges of producing, processing and marketing their produce. These challenges, which is not peculiar to the state, contribute immensely to food shortage and high cost of food across the country. The Value Chain Development Program is an initiative of the federal government to provide technical support for these farmers to cope hunger and poverty. This necessitated the implementation of projects such as boreholes and stalls in five local government areas of Nasara State. The project is done in collaboration with the Nasara State government. Now, the Wamba projects are ready and Governor Sule is here to inaugurate them. These stalls are expected to enhance the marketing capabilities of the farmers while the boreholes are expected to aid the processing of rice and cassava. The governor who is flanked by top government functionaries cuts the tape and wants the facilities to be judiciously used by farmers. The Value Chain Development Program is the initiative of the federal government of Nigeria which is geared towards diversifying the economy as an alternative source for revenue. The program is intended to focus more attention on agricultural growth with a view to transforming the sector as the mainstay of Nigeria's economy. It will be recalled that Nasarawa State Government keyed into the program of this value chain on the 11th, on the 1st of July 2020. In this regard, in our determination to support the program, we went ahead, at, uh, which was mentioned earlier, approved the release of the sum of 176 million naira, which was part of what is what was required for the two years of this program. Encourage rice cuisine farming. The project distributed 3,850 kg in two varieties of seeds, 23,100 kg of fertilizers, 156 liters of selective and non-selective herbicides to 136 farmers in Doma and Lafia LDAs of Natural State. In collaboration with GIZ Acting, PCDP has trained 300 farmers on financial literacy aimed at helping farmers to learn how to access financial uh, services. Similarly, a total of 129 youth and women were selected across the participating LGAs for various enterprises along the rice cassava value chain and are benefiting from empowerment designed to transform their businesses. Not only that, the value chain program also promotes agro-processing. It increases the access to market. It also achieves food security through the provisions of basic amenities and the farm input. This program also increases the rural income of the small farmers, small farmers. It also creates a new employment opportunity. This program is very important because looking at the establishment of this program and with the, the effort you make so far, this is the first time that uh, we. This is the first time that His Excellency was able to approve the budget or allocate a budgetary allocation of five percent to agriculture. The farmers are hopeful that the facilities would open vista opportunities for their businesses to grow and boost their financial capacity. So, uh, Wamba is mostly known for producing and which is one of the greatest value chain of cassava. And for us, this is that, that alibo is also used in processing fish feed 
and a lot of things. And for us, it will put us in the center of a value chain that people will come to Wamba to get one of the major products they need, as well as we're able to uh, enrich our lives in the community. Things have bring help to us because we face a lot of challenge of bringing this. We don't have stove to store our rice and then alibo. We don't have stove, but this uh, program has put us in a good condition where they gave us a shop where we are going to stock our crops there when in the day of market we are going to distribute it for the uh, marketers where we, they will come and buy from us we are going to give them in a modern price that we are getting it from the uh, for the farmers being stored here when they come we are going to market it for them these facilities inaugurated would further enhance the capacity of cassava and rice farmers to produce, process and market their farm produce. This gathering is for a usual and yet uncommon event in Masara State. Judges, lawyers, lawmakers, commissioners and other top functionaries of the state are present here. They're here for inauguration of the first female chief judge of the state since its 25 years of existence. Governor Abdullah Suli steps into the hall. After the national anthem, he administers the oath of office to Justice Aisha Bashir. That as the chief judge of Nassau State, I will discharge my duties and perform my functions honestly to the best of my ability the governor wants the new chief judge to place public interest above personal interest in the dispensation of justice. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I need to add that judiciary is the hope of the common man and those who are not so common in the society. As a chief judge, you must realize that this is a call to serve the people and in carrying out your official duties, I urge you to let the fear of God and public interest take precedence over personal references, preferences and inclinations. It is important to once again state that your appointment as the Honorable Chief Judge of Nasrallah State is based on your record of experience, professionalism, patriotism, loyalty and above all your integrity in the program of conservation that you have been let me take the liberty of this occasion to reiterate the resolve of this administration to continue to support the judicial arm of government towards quick dispensation of justice. It is for this reason that we have granted increase in the subvention of the judiciary to enable them implement law to enhance allowances of magistrates and judges of the Supreme Court. And I thank you for agreeing to do that. The new chief judge signs the record book, receives her letter of appointment, and assures of fairness and equity in the course of her duties. Thank you so much. There's so many of you. I cannot waste the time by calling your name, but I really thank and appreciate all of you, your love, your support, and concern. And on behalf of the other members we this one today, we wish to thank His Excellency. We wish to thank you all so very much. Lawyers in the state are confident that the appointment of the new chief judge would better improve the system of justice in the state. In the last three months of her acting appointment, the state judiciary experienced quantum improvement and changes in both life and condition of both the staff and the infrastructure of the arm of government. May I also use this opportunity to thank His Excellency, Bon Abdullah Yesui, for his commitment to the rule of law and the entrenchment of the institutions of justice. The present administration since its inception on 29th of May 2019 has continued to ensure full access to autonomy on judicial arm and extension of all resources needed for judiciary to thrive. In Nassau State, the executive releases subvention to judiciary to utilize as they wish. The swearing in of the first female chief judge who addresses the resolve of Governor Suli to ensure strict compliance with due process in appointments, devoid of sentiments. Welcome to our interview segment. Today, we will be speaking with Professor Alizaga Salim. He is the Economic Commissioner for Lands and Urban Development in the National State. The National State has continued to enjoy the privilege of its proximity to the Federal Capital Territory. This has brought about a lot of persons coming to states to acquire landed properties. What is the government doing to ensure that uh, 
acquiring land titles uh, for these properties by these clients are made easy? So far, except in some very few cases where there are some uh, duplications of issuance of R of O's and C of O's, where uh, diligent investigation will have to be taken or will have to be undertaken before the R of O's are issued. Uh, it doesn't take more than two to, two to four weeks for us to issue those land uh, documents. Uh, also, in order that our past clients, who, who are still our clients, that we have, when we came on board, we made a debt of about 10 billion naira outstanding for uncollected R of O's, C of O's, and even uh, uh, failure to pay their grant rent. Uh, either lack of diligent uh, work or that there were some underhand deals which was frustrating the collection. And uh, what we did is to ensure that all these negative uh, uh, perceptions that uh, people try to look at this ministry. I say, hey, you know, we, uh, uh, under my watch, we uh, substantially minimized mm -hmm. because we also went on air. Okay, we, went to, we also went on air, air uh, telling people that people are free to come uh, to collect their uh, out of the sea of course. But before doing that also, we, we out of our meetings, uh, we were able to through through Nigis, through through Nigis, because as I said, Nigis is, is an affiliate of this ministry. Yes. So anything that Nigis does, the, the, the policy comes from here, yes. comes from the ministry. Uh, we it was we agreed that in order to encourage our clients that have not come to collect their arms for C O because of one reason or the other, we have decided to also uh, of twenty five. To 35 percent, depending on the quantum of money, mm. quantum of fees that are, that you know that are charged to these clients, and uh, we did that between uh, June and December last year. We gave them that waivers for as much as three to six months waivers, and as a result of that, I I want to assure you that uh, a lot of uh, uh, revenues was generated through that, uh, apart from some other, uh, you know, activities that we did in order to fast track the issuance of this uh, R of O's and C of O's and so forth so, that I have mentioned. From an array of recommendations that were offered to the ministry, uh, we have actually gone ahead to produce a, a, a pamphlet or what you call a document on how to uh, do business with us. So we say business plan, we that to document business plan of the Ministry of Lands and Urban Development. In this, we have actually uh, gone ahead to one, uh, as I said, Give an a renewed impetus on the collection, efficient collection uh, machinery of our revenues. Because uh, we also discovered that before we, before we came on board, the system of collecting the revenues was not uh, transparent. So, in line with the transparent posture of this administration, we, we insisted that, uh, in fact, up to three months, I assume, office here. They were still collecting money, cash. You know, I will go to ATM, I will suffer and suffer. And, and I said uh, that, that, that will not be tolerated. Uh, in fact, I, I was saying it should be through the ministry's uh, uh, portal that is the metal payment system. Mm. But uh, before I came in, they said that, of course, there is a the state uh, CPS, the yes. billion system, which we must, which in, after discussing with the term of revenue, Yes, now the, 
he now said he supported me fully. So that when we, when we went, even before the GPT governor on revenue generation, I, I, I said that and they were surprised. But uh, after that, we quickly tried to rectify that uh, problem. So even the, even the machinery, the revenue collection machinery has been substantially uh, improved, more, made more uh, transparent. Okay? At the same time, this, as I said, as a result of the debt of over 10 billion that I was telling you, that was that was still uh, that that was uncollected, we would we renew impetus on you know reducing the time frame, on reducing some uh, underhand deals by my staff, where people have come come in, and also by giving some level of waivers to the, our, our, our our clients on the heater to debts. They, they were on the this has boosted the revenue profile of the ministry. Recently, let's look at the Carol Peninsula. Recently, the state government entered into partnership with Infinity Homes to develop uh, the Carol Peninsula. Uh, what do the people of Nasra State stand to benefit from this uh, agreement entered into uh, by the state government? Um, when the agreement was signed by His Excellency in our, in our government liaison office, uh, he did say that uh, because of his You know, because of his zeal, you know, his, uh, his, you know, because of his zeal, because of his uh, determination to ensure that we utilize our proximity to Abuja, uh, he has, despite all pressures, insisted that that issue of Peninsula must be brought to an end. This, this crisis, these litigations, either between those people that were given the land before, clients that were uh, applicants that were given land, or even our, or even the customer owners who were always in the legal battle with them in the, in the court. He said that team was brought an end. So as I said, uh, my true he he asked the commissioner for just to come and meet me so that we will try and resolve any other problem. But he is bent on making sure that that place is developed in line with the, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the actual reason that is, you know, plant urban development. And um, I think also more importantly, the quantum of revenue that is to be generated from that signing has been stressed by the essence You see, ordinarily, we were supposed to generate just about 2 billion naira if you are going to allocate the land to individuals and ask them to go and develop. You understand? One, apart from generating only 2 billion naira, the kind of structures that those people are going to build may not be in tandem with what the government is, a, is a, you know, you know wants. More importantly, on the side of even general, uh, uh, revenue generation, the governor said, uh, and as part of the agreement, which I, which I was a uh, witness to sign, you understand, she, uh, in the case that the government is getting about 9 billion naira, 9 billion naira, almost yearly. Mm. All right, thank you very much for your time. Professor Saliu Alizaga, Honorable Commissioner for Lands and About Development, National State. Thank we you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.